Consider the circuit shown below. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So if you want to try this problem, I'll pause the video and work on it, and then answer every question. Now we have a circuit where the resistors are connected in series. And the reason why they're connected in series is because there's only one path for the current to flow. And so the current that flows through each resistor is the same. Now the first thing we need to do is calculate the total resistance of the circuit. In a series circuit, the total resistance is the sum of R1 and R2. So it's going to be 4 plus 8, which is 12 ohms. Now, part B, how much current flows from the battery? In a series circuit, there's only one current. In a parallel circuit, there's multiple currents. So the current that flows from the battery is going to be the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance of the circuit. So it's 36 volts divided by 12 ohms. So that's equal to a current of 3 amps. Now, part C, what is the voltage across each resistor? How can we calculate that? To calculate the voltage, we could use Ohm's law. It's equal to the current that flows through a resistor multiplied by the value of the resistance itself. So to calculate V1, V1 is going to be the current, which is 3 amps, multiplied by the 8 ohm resistor. So the voltage across this resistor is 24 volts. Now to calculate the voltage across the second resistor, we'll call it V2, it's going to be the same current of 3 amps multiplied by 4 ohms. And so that's going to be 12 volts. So notice that the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor is half of the voltage drop across the 8 ohm resistor. As the resistance increases, the voltage drop across that resistor increases. And these are known as voltage drops because they decrease the electric potential as the current flows in this direction. So let's say if the electric potential here is zero, at this point, it's going to be 12 volts. And at this point, it's 36. So notice that the charges at this point have a higher potential than the charges at that point. And so what a resistor does is it consumes electrical energy from the charges. So as a charge flows through a resistor, it loses energy, and a resistor absorbs that energy, converts it into heat. Now the battery acts like a pump. When the charges go this in, uh, in that direction, that's really the current, by the way, conventional current, the battery does work on the charges, and so it increases the electric potential of the charge from 0 to 36 volts. So make sure you understand this. The battery increases the electric potential of the charges. The resistors, they decrease the energy of the charges. And when you hear the word potential or electric potential, which is measured in volts, it's really the energy per unit charge. So one volt is one joule per coulomb. So voltage is basically, it's an energy per charge ratio. So it's related to energy, but it depends on the amount of charge that you're dealing with. Now notice that the voltage drops is equal to the voltage of the battery. And this is associated with Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the voltages around a closed circuit must add up to zero. So because the battery increases the electric potential or the energy per unit charge of the charges, I'm going to give it a positive voltage because it increases the energy of the charges. And this, I'm going to give it a negative voltage because resistors, they decrease the energy of a charge. And so if you add up 36 and negative 24 and negative 12, the voltage around the circuit adds up to zero. So anything that increases the energy of a charge, you can assign a positive voltage to it. If it decreases the energy of the charge that's flowing in the circuit, you can assign a negative voltage to it. Now, let's go back to the problem. Let's move on to part D. 
how much power is absorbed by each resistor. The best way to calculate power absorbed by the resistor, or there's multiple ways, but I like to use this equation. P is equal to I squared times R. So the current that flows through the resistor is 3 amps. And for resistor 1, it has a value of 8 ohms. So it's 3 squared times 8. And so that resistor absorbs 72 watts of power. Now for the second resistor, P2 is going to be equal to I squared times R2. The current is still 3 amps, but the resistance is 4. So 3 squared is 9, 9 times 4 is 36. So this resistor consumes 36 watts or 36 joules every second. Now let's calculate the power delivered by the battery. Power is also voltage times current. The voltage of the battery is 36 volts, and the current that leaves it is 3 amps. So if we take 36 and multiply it by 3, we can see that the battery delivers 108 watts of power. And so notice that the power delivered by the battery is equal to the sum of all the power that is absorbed by the resistor, by the two resistors, that is. So 72 plus 36 is 108. So we can clearly see that the power delivered by the battery is equal to the total power absorbed by all of the resistors. And this is due to the law of conservation of energy. The rate at which the battery transfers energy to the circuit is equal to the rate at which all the elements in the circuit consume that energy. So now let me give you another example. But instead of two resistors, we're going to use three resistors in a series circuit. And I want you to answer every question just like you did before. So we're going to have a battery, and we're going to have three resistors. So let's say this is a four. Actually, let's change it. Let's make this a five ohm resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, and a 20 ohm resistor. And we're going to say that the voltage is 175 volts. This is the positive terminal, and this is the negative terminal. So first, what's the total resistance in the circuit? So the total resistance is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3. So let's call this R1, R2, and R3. So R1 is 5, R2 is 10, R3 is 20. So this adds up to 35 ohms. That's the total. Now let's move on to part B. Let's calculate the total current. That's going to be the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance. So it's 175 volts divided by 35 ohms. And so the current that flows in this circuit is equal to 5 amps. Now let's move on to part C. So what is the voltage across each resistor? So let's start with resistor 1. So V1 is going to equal I times R1. So the current flowing through each resistor is 5 amps, and R1 is 5 ohms. So the voltage across this element is 25 volts. Now let's calculate the voltage across the second resistor. So that's going to be I times R2. So it still has the same current, 5 amps, but multiplied by 10 ohms. So that's going to give us a voltage of 50 volts. So that's the value of V2. Now let's do the same thing for the third resistor. So V3 is going to equal I times R3. So that's a current of 5 amps multiplied by 20 ohms. 5 times 20 is 100. So the voltage across this resistor is 100 volts. Now if we add them, 25 plus 50 plus 100 adds up to 175. So we know that the work is correct at this point. 
Now let's calculate the power absorbed by each resistor. So let's start with P1. It's going to equal I squared times R1. So we have a current of 5 amps and R1 is 5 ohms. 5 squared is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. So this resistor absorbs 125 watts of power. Now let's focus on the second resistor. This time I'm going to use a different variant of this equation. So I'm going to use V squared over R. So this is going to be the voltage across the resistor, which is 50 volts. That's across R2. We need to square that value, divided by the resistance, which is 10 ohms. So 50 squared is 2,500. And if we divide that by 10, that gives us a power of 250 watts. So that's how much power is absorbed by the second resistor. Now for the last one, I'm going to use this equation, voltage times current. The voltage across this resistor is 100 volts, and the current that flows through it is 5 amps. So 100 times 5, that's 500 watts. Now let's calculate the power delivered by the battery. So I'm going to use this equation as well. So the voltage of the battery is 175 volts, and the current of the battery that is 5 amps. So 175 times 5 is equal to 875. So that's how much power is delivered by this battery. And if we add up 500 plus 250 plus 125, notice that it adds up to 875. So everything is balanced in this circuit. And that's how you know if you did it correctly.